All right, all right. Good evening and good night and welcome to the Intro Perspective Talk Show. It is uh, Thursday, July 28, 2016. My name is David, a.k.a. Kimba, a.k.a. Christian. Bingy Soup's uh, special assignment tonight. We'll link back with him on Tuesday next week. I just want to say that this is the Intro Perspective Talk Show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 p.m. until. We do have a telephone number, 340-201-9005. You can also text us on that number as well. But most importantly, you have to go to our website, streaming live from the vi.com. Uh, go to that website, click on a tab that says Watch Us Live, and you'll be able to see the show tonight. Uh, if you're too, sh- too shy to call or text, we do have email, streaming live from the VI at yahoo.com. You can link us up there as well. It'll pop up right here, and I'll get your question and your comment on the show tonight. We are in a high-tech, low-tech studio, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. No radio or TV, internet only, which means you have to get your iOS, your Android, your, uh, your tablet, your iPad, your Mac, or your Windows, or even your Linux PC. Open up your browser, type in streaming live from the vi.com. You'll be able to see the show tonight. We have two Facebook pages. Uh, I want to give a super shout out to CHS class in 1982. That's the year that Super and I represent. Uh, but most importantly, we want to give a quick shout out to all our past guests. Thanks for being on our show. We're on Twitter as well. Link us up there at VI Perspective. And the show's mission is just uh, to inform and entertain and empower everyone. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Maggie's Party Decor and Supersonic Computer Services, and also um, uh, Add a Touch Boutique here in Sunny Isles Shopping Center, Mini Mall, St. Croix, Virgin Islands. Uh, thanks for being a sponsor of the show. Uh, and as we move on here, real quick, man, we're running a little late tonight, but here we are, man. We do have a guest in the studio tonight, man. There he is, Tafari. Blessed love to you. Thanks for coming through again, man. I think you've been here a couple times at least already, right? Yes, I've been here a couple of times. Give thanks. Yes, sir, for sure, man. And uh, we do have some uh, some in studio guests on the side there. Uh, Ross Batchett's in the studio. You can't see him, but there he is over there. And uh, we have two other people. There. I'm not sure who, what their names are, but we got a, we got a full house tonight. Big ups for coming through the studio tonight to everybody. You know. So Tafari, man. So what brings you in tonight, man? Well, first of all, I give thanks uh, to the guy for having I here. So being the soup, for the guy. Maintaining the cause of righteousness and educating the, not just St. Croix and the Virgin Islands, but the whole world. Uh, so I give thanks to be a, a part of the fullness here that the I am being the soup is, is doing, you know? Yes, sir. Thank you, it's man. It's your perspective. Give yes. thanks. Yes, sir. For sure, man. Uh, today, I and I come forward in the light and in the glory of the King of Kings. Having seen His Imperial Majesty Emperor El Selassie I, 124th Earth Light has just passed uh, July 23rd. 23rd, yes. Yes, and internationally, sons and daughters of the Most High is giving praises on to the Most High for this celebration time. And right now, ISIS is riding in certain parts of the Earth. The celebration has not stopped. Uh, in Jamaica, I think it's a 13 light ISIS. So, just in the wake of that glorious occasion, the 124th, the 24th Earth Light, for in 1892, and to I and I, a child was born and a son was given. So we all have to take account of that, things that has happened in the earth. So I give thanks, and before I go further, I'd like to, for the I and the audience to indulge with I, because uh, when it comes to the King of Kings and the glory, it is not something we could just mash gas and go full speed. Then you would have missed so much in between. So when it comes to the truth and the right, we are to take our time with it. So if you would allow me and your audience to take my time as the reason of the glory of the King of Kings, I would appreciate that. Yes, sir, for sure, man. I will start off by sharing Psalms 2. For why do the heathen rage? and the people imagine a vain thing. For false kings of the earth set themselves, and misleaders take counsel together against the almighty Emperor Selassie I, and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cards from us. For the almighty that sitteth in Mount Zion shall laugh at them, yet she shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasures. I and I and I have seen Emperor El Selassie I the first upon the throne of David in Ethiopia, Mount Zion. 
Therefore, I and I will declare the decree that the Almighty said unto I and I, This day the I art my sons and daughters, and I have begotten the I. Ask of I, and I shall give the heathen for thy inheritance, and the inner and the outermost parts of the earth for thy possession. The I shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessels. So be wise therefore, ye kings of the earth, and be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the almighty Emperor El Selassie I the first with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Heal I and I his sons and daughters, lest the eye be angry and the eye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed is all of I and I and I that put our trust and faith and love in his imperial majesty. Emperor Heliai, Selassie I the first, Selah. Amen, amen, amen. So in just blocking that Psalms, I see it has been a conspiracy in the earth by the nations and the false kings and false rulers of the earth to fight down the truth and to keep that which is right and good for all of creation to fight that and don't let that free the world and I'm speaking of his imperial majesty for the prophecy it was prophesied that yes unto us Isaiah 9 6 unto us a son is born and a child is given. He said, yes, the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the Iva Living Father. Upon the increase of his government, there shall be no end upon David's throne. These are prophetical prophecies. When we look into creation historically, we see the manifestation, that which is truth. We cannot speak of the glory of the King of Kings without mentioning historical facts like the Kebra Negas, which speaks of the glory of the Ark of the Covenant, where it told us the great Queen of the South, Queen Makeda, traveled to Jerusalem to Solomon, King Solomon. First Kings chapter 10 tells us that never tells us nothing after that but in the book of the Kebranigas it tells us the union between King Solomon and Queen Makeda that union brought forward Menelik the first and Menelik the first upon his arrival to Ethiopia he brought forward the Ark of the Covenant with the Levitical priests for King Solomon gave every firstborn son in Jerusalem to Menelik the first for them to accompany him to Ethiopia so he not only went with the priesthood he also went with the army because yes there was an army men warriors so when we look at that coming into Ethiopia to this day the Ark of the Covenant still resides in Ethiopia when we look at history again, we see that in 1886 or 87, the Berlin Conference with the European nations, these false kings got together and sat up around the big round table. And they, they conspire that we should go into Africa and take control, stamp out those indigenous brothers and sisters and take their resources for their possession. History has shown us where we saw the, the slave Atlantic, the, the, uh, the slave trade, where our ancestors were taken away captives and brought to the West. We also saw in 1896 because after the Berlin Conference and they come into Africa and carved up Africa and stole our resources, we saw His Majesty was born in 1892 to Ras Makonin and Wazari Yashimabet. His Majesty is the eighth, the eighth uh, pregnancy that Yashimabet had. 
all other previous births were fatal. But His Majesty was born in July 23rd, 1892, that Christ child. And chapter 12 in Revelation speaks of that birth. For it says, there was a great sign in heaven. And when I looked, I saw a woman with this clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And she had a crown on her head, 12 stars. And then I saw that this woman was prevailing to give birth unto a man child that was to rule the world with the rod of iron. And this man child was caught up unto the Almighty and unto his throne. This is prophetical words out the prophecy. It says now there was another wonder, a sign in the heavens. There was a dragon that was rotted because this woman, this empress, this queen was about to give birth to this great man child. Therefore, the dragon was rotted and he waged war against this woman till the dragon opened up its mouth and spouted out water, he says in Revelation. Well, historically, in 1892, on July 23rd, the birth of His Majesty, it broke a seven-year drought in the land of Ethiopia, where cattle, people, crops, everything was being devastated by this drought. And the heavens, the stars, the moon, it was all aligned by the cosmic. That the great star, the northern star shone bright over Harar, the province where His Majesty was born. And at the birth of His Majesty, the drought was broken with heavy rain, heavy rains. Now, prophetically, he said the dragon sputted out water with the intentions to drown out the man child and to take the woman life and he said the earth opened up its bosom and sucked in the water therefore the child was secure it was a shame that during the birth of his majesty shortly after the dragon was so rotted with the queen that the empress was Arya Shima but lost her life. It was said in the prophecy that she took flight like wings of an eagle and flew to the heavens of heavens for a time and time and a half a season. But I and I give thanks and praises unto Empress Wazari Yashima Bet because her duty in the earth was to bring forward that man child. And that man child in 1892 was born Lij Tafari Makonin. We saw in 1896, we saw Rome wage war in Abyssinia, the ancient empire of Abyssinia, which is also known as Ethiopia. And Emperor Menelik II, who is His Majesty, great great cousin, Rasmakonin, cousin as well, stood up on the throne and defended the empire of Abyssinia and defeated the European. Let it be known in history, it was the first defeat by the hands of Africans to defeat the Europeans who came with such 
weapons of war <laughs> that I and I are indigenous for parents. We're not people of war. We have hoes and picks and shovels and forks to tend to the earth. So we saw that the power of the Almighty defended the empire of Abyssinia and defeated Europe, that that was marked the first defeat by the hands of Africans that Europe suffered. I and I see this as the days when they tell us Yahushua, the Christ child 2,000 years before was born in the earth, the great star shone over the great land of Jerusalem. And Herod sent out his pirates, his soldiers, to try to kill off that child, that man-child. 2,000 years again, Herod, Rome, Europe, send their military soldiers to the empire of Abyssinia, who stepped not into Rome to wage war, nor caused any confrontation, but was found having to have to defend our empire and our family's lives and our sovereignty from such time. Now, this is devastating, knowing that all the other Europe, all the other African countries was facing the same thing and they were being defeated by Europe. To see Menelik II stand up with Ras Makonin and defeat Europe, humiliated them. It is an honor and a glory to show that yes, righteousness do stand in the earth. And if the foundations are destroyed, what can I and I the righteous do? We look again at Psalms 87, for it was said, in Ethiopia, this man was born. And it shall be said that this man will establish her, Ethiopia. And he shall count when he write up the people that yes, he was born there. So I say, who is the psalmist speaking about when he said he was born there in Ethiopia? So the whole prophecy I see speaks of the glory of the King of Kings. Revelation 19. Yeah, I see. Revelation 5. But when we look at history, we also see how it manifests. Because we say mentally, physically, spiritually. If it can't fit on all three levels as predominant truth in the earth, then there's some kind of farm that is not truth somehow. But spiritually, the prophecy, the Bible, whatever language text it's written in, the ancient scrolls, the Kebra Negas, they all speak of the glory of this King of Kings. When we look at it, physically, physically I must see as historically manifest in the earth, physical. Like I said, in 1892, we can show you, yes, when the dragon waged war and he sputted out water, it was the drought that the Almighty broke the drought and the heavy rains came. Even though Yashima bet lost a life, His Majesty was born. That eighth child, or not child, but the eighth conception, conception of the birth of that union there, they conceive that child was born previous seven was passed. Now eight, the number eight, it is looked at as an infinite number, infinity, perfection, eight. His Majesty is the eight. So and I see these things manifest physically and then when we also look at it, <clears throat> for he said all nations shall come and bow and give homage and honor and glory unto him. The prophecy says so. And historically, we saw in November 2nd, 1930, 
the nations them of the world, they all send representatives to the ancient land of Abyssinia, which is known as Ethiopia, to pay respect and honor and to his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. Physically, we see this happen in the earth, written, documented. Now in the Bible, in the scrolls, the ancient scrolls, it told us, and it's Vesta, it was written, King of kings and lords of lords, conquering lion of Judah. In Ethiopia, his majesty garments, he had the name written, Kebra, Negus Negas, King of Kings. So, the Rasta man is not the only man who pay attention to prophecy, to history, mentally, physically, spiritually, mentally. I see as enlightenment, consciousness. So the Rasta man is not the only man in the earth who see this. But our counterparts, the European nations, they know this. That's why they waged war on his majesty. That's why Rome said, without us controlling Ethiopia, and David's throne, we cannot claim that we are Christ and have the glory of Zion in our hands. So that's why Rome have constantly been pushing up on Ethiopia and waging war. Because they know history. They know prophecy. So what they do is try to taint it and distort it and feed it to the world. We look at religion. His Majesty come and teach us about religion. We tell I and I, religion is a set of laws, devices set by man that was supposed to bring man closer to the Almighty. But because of the corruption of man, it is used for the device of wickedness, for they to gain power, wealth. The pastors, them is like a, the church has become like a whorehouse. So, His Majesty tell us about spirituality. A network that connects all of creation to the Almighty and His creation. Everything is connected in creation. We are connected. One, spirituality. His Majesty let us know we should never argue, fuss, nor fight with anyone over their faith, their religion, because we're spiritual kinsmen in the earth. We're brothers and sisters. The teachings of His Majesty is what we need. If we don't get the teachings of His Majesty, we're getting the teachings of the shit stem of Babylon that is leading the whole world astray. We're getting the teachings of Rome, of all the Pope them that deceive the whole world. And the teachings of His Majesty has always been imprinted in the earth from the foundations of creation. If you would allow me, because some people burn the Bible. They say King James write it, so fire burn the Bible. They said there is lies in the Bible, so they don't deal with the Bible. But His Majesty said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Excuse me. <coughs> Again, we see, His Majesty said, a man without spirituality and without that faith, and the teachings and the glory of the Bible, he said it's like a ship without a rudder. He's at the mercy of the waves. His Majesty said the Bible 
It is the rallying point of humanity. So I will say now, I agree totally with His Majesty. The Bible, without you being led by the divine power of the Almighty, where it says Spirit, without you being led by the Spirit of Truth and Right, the Irits of the Most High, you will be last in the Bible. That's why the whole world use the Bible and they are last still in darkness, because they are not led by the Spirit of Truth and Right. They are led by Rome. They are led by pastors and preachers that lead the flock astray because the word is not the focus. It's religion, a tool and device to control people for your own gain. But when I look at the Bible, and I, and I go through the Bible and read, I dictate and is led by the irates of truth, I see, wow, the ancient sea of I and I ancient ancestors in Kush. I have traveled to Ethiopia. I have traveled to Bahadar, Lake Tana, where you will find the source of the Blue Nile. Now you said the Nile River, well, up in that mountain there is the source of it. So when I read it in the prophetical language, and I and I can see it physically, I come to realize there is When the 24 ancients them said, weep not, for I hold, the conquering lion of Judah has prevailed. Weep not. Prevail to open up the book and loose the seven seals. Well, his majesty come and open up the book for I and I, open up I and I seven seals, the chakras within I and I, the temple of man, that we could be guided by light, by the light of his majesty, by righteousness, that we could find truth. Because the same Bible is what they forced upon our forefathers, you know, my brother. When they brought us in captivity out of Africa, they beat out our spirituality out of us. They beat out our Yanai language out of us. Cut us off from the umbilical card. So we'll never find our way home again. The door of no return. Did I check it out? These ain't acts done by a people who just get up one morning and say, this is what we're going to do right now. This was sat down, thought about, planned out, conspired, and then went out into action. And I see, all through that perilous times we went through, the Father didn't desert us. Because for those and them that dwell in the land of darkness, the land of death, the shadow of death. Here in Babylon, in the West, where I and I ancestors, millions last the life, just crossing the great Atlantic. No one don't care about that, man. Millions last the lives on these soils here in the Caribbean, where the carrier so far beyond, and in Americas, and in Europe. Nobody not care about that man. Life that is precious. To the here in St. Cry, in our Virgin Island Street, my young brothers are taking each other's lives. Like it don't even matter. Who was being annihilated by the Europeans at one time? Now it is black against black. We can't stand for that, my brother. His Majesty come and give us instructions. He said, throw down all weapons of war. Disarmament of nuclear powers, man. Nuclear bombs and guns. You think the world take it? His Majesty tell them, it is not right for no country. Make you how big you be. 
to step and interfere in another country business, internal business, because of your own gain that you may have to gain. Whether resources, exploitation or what, this man is you don't do those things. Today we see war in all parts of the earth because nations respect no other nation. They interfere with other countries' business. And ain't no other country does that better than America. America jump into every other place business and tell them what they should do and how they should do it. All right, all right. You're right. So when I look at these things again, His Majesty come and he said, and not just by talk. That's why the Rasta man, we heal His Majesty for life eternal because we know His Majesty didn't just step on the scene in 1892 neither. His Majesty always been on the scene. Just like I and I ancient, mama and papa, that last the life in that great Atlantic Sea. And my brotherhood they beat to death, hang up on the, on the um, mahogany tree down in West. Yeah, their life matter to I and I. That we feel it this day. And they didn't lose the life in vain. So, His Majesty show I and I. Even though such atrocities has been done unto I and I, he told us, do not what the oppressor has done to you and to them. For example, May 5th, 1941. We also call that Ethiopian Freedom Day. Some call it Ethiopian uh, Independent Day again. Well, May 5th, 1941, mark five years to the day, May 5th, 1936, when His Majesty went into Europe and sat down in Europe and warned the Europeans of the pending judgment that shall come unto them and stood in their face for five years, not like a coward. Because if a coward will not go in the land <laughs> where the oppressor is and stand in his face and rally the whole world in front of his face and let him know that judgment is coming to him. His Majesty did that, warned them and rallied the world and agitated it for the cause of Ethiopia. His Majesty said when he returned in Ethiopia May 5th, 1941, he told the Ethiopian citizens, he said, Today marks a new era in Ethiopian history. He said, Yes, the Italians, them that came in and destroyed our families, destroyed the works that we have started. He said, Yes, they too have families in Italy. Let us take their weapons away from them. Put them back on the ships as they came and send them home to their families. Do not touch any of the Italian soldiers. For they, today marks a new era in our history. Show him them that merciful, loving kindness it I do it. And that was a, a commandment and an order went out. He told the Italian soldiers that they taken Ethiopian women and had children with them. He said, if the I would love to stay in Ethiopia, because you have started families now, you may. You have no power to make any rules and any set. But you are welcome to live here, free, as a free man, side by side, and enjoy our culture. No man in the earth, no king in the earth I know have such mercies would have sent out such an order to his soldiers, touch none of the enemies, but send them back home to their families. Because they have families. That's merciful, loving kindness. So to our colonial slave masters, for the great atrocities that they have done unto our four parents, the message to our brothers today and sisters throughout the whole diaspora, 
is don't reward hatred for hatred. Look not at your brother that may be of another nationality, another faith. Look at him not with a screw face. Europe, all of these nations, they I know the Knights of Malta, Denmark, Spain, and the list goes on. Let us not reward them evil for evil. Because we will not be able to go forward in creation. To bring forward a better creation for our humanity. If we are filled with hatred and vengeance. And at the coronation of His Majesty, November 2nd, 1930. Like I said, he opened up the book. And opened up the seals in the temple of man that we could make sense out of what was really going on in the earth because great atrocities were done unto us my brother the teller and i we three-fifths of a human not even a human yet still our greater mama and papa gave birth to all of our humanity and they could come wrong and tell i and i we are three-fifths so the glory of the king of kings he come to show us, His Majesty said, when African righteous people come together, Africa and the whole world will come together. He said, this is our divine destiny. When I look at the words of His Majesty, the teachings, I don't just take the teachings of His Majesty as um, just word for word as to say, it's just like a story, a man read a book and, you know, but... I take the words of His Majesty as divine. I take the teachings and His examples, what He have done, to be divine at what, not just I, but the whole of Irish and humanity should embrace and try to walk in, emulate that light. Because when you said destiny, you use the words like destiny. That means there's no power on the earth can stop that if it's destined to happen when we say um, Rome Europe try to stamp we out even the residue to kill us off that we may never find our way home again the door of no return and then I could see I and I ancestors them all man like Wilmot blighting sung in a trumpet Africa for the Africans at home and abroad, repatriation is a must. And I can see man like Caspar Holstein and these other brothers here, Marcus Messiah Garvey, rallying the black nation and telling them, rise up. Be that which the Almighty has created us to be. These is words of destiny. There's no power on earth can stop it. So we, Rastafari people, African people, and all of our humanity, not just Rastafari alone, you know, but the whole of our humanity, through the grace of His Majesty, we are able to still be moving this day. I prefer to reason with the people more heart to heart than to go so much into reading. But like I tell you, you check your prophecy. Because in, even in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, those of you who are at home, you can grab your prophecy. Daniel tell him and eat the book. Sweet to the mouth, bitter to the tummy. Because now you have become enlightened, consciousness, open, you now become responsible. His Majesty said, man seeketh power, but they don't want responsibility in the earth. Rome want power, but they don't want to be responsible. Do I see? So, it's the same way now. The Rasta man become enlightened, conscious. We have a responsibility. And the responsibility 
is to ionize, not just to save I and I and I sell some annihilation out here, but I manity. Why? When Europe, Italy wage war on Ethiopia, His Majesty went to Geneva, Switzerland, to speak at the <coughs> speak at the, the United Nations, and he tell them man this year. He said, "Yeah, today it is humanity that is at risk." They really think it was Ethiopia at risk. But he tell them, no, it is humanity that is at risk. What shall we do? Today your wage war on Ethiopia. And tomorrow it shall be you. His Majesty said, Africa am a Gideon. It is passed over. We Africans have went through the greatest atrocity of the our Holocaust is greater than any other nation Holocaust. Yet still they speak not about our Holocaust. They come tell I and I about the Jews. When I and I are the real Jews of the earth. The I look on the Meduneta and Kemet. We will show you these things here, you know. Christianity. The same Judah, Judeo Christianity, uh, 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 and Muslim. <clears throat> all of these things here is written on the Meduneta showing you all of these things come from us. So it really let us see that mankind was led astray by the deception of Rome and the perpetuation of Europe. Because Europe come and come in with their colonialism brainwash the people them of the art Rome forced on them white Jesus tell them everything that is black is cursed there's no way to go to heaven but to dead the deception of lies have mounted up so high in the earth that man himself lost their way they don't know what to believe anymore but like I said, through the grace and the power of the Almighty, the Father always sends his saints and his prophets in the midst of confusion. Remember Kunta Kinte? That's why I'm a great prophet to you now. Yeah, man, my bigger brother. To show all I and I other brothers on the plantation. Remember your roots. Remember you come from Africa. Me and Toby, this Kunta Kinte, from the Mandinka tribe. When he had the first born Kizzy, he offered her up to the heavens. And words, sound, and power called out his heritage and his genealogy and the tribe and his ancestors. And to Kizzy in word, song, and power so that the, the host of angels, I and I ancestors, can encamp around the baby Kizzy. Same thing with Marcus, same thing with Mr. Dr. Wilmot Blyden. These were saints, prophets. Even through this great time for Dr. Wilmot Blyden, went to America to, to go to college to become a preacher and was denied because of the color of his skin. Therefore, he ended up in Africa after telling them repatriation is a must. Blyden sit up in Africa, Liberia, and become a great scholar and educator and leader. This is the glory of the King of Kings because here it is now. When we look in the earth, his Majesty Black a song again. He come to Jamaica and he said, We, the Ethiopians and the Jamaicans, are blood brothers. Now, we have to be guided by spirit of truth. I don't take it that he was just saying, Oh, the man in Jamaica alone is my blood brother. But he was referring to the Jamaicans and all of the African black man with melanin were blood brothers. 
Is she? That means okay, we're blood brothers. And I look at these things very serious. His Majesty also told them. He said, holy priests, warriors and traitors, be still and know that I am he. Now, to the ordinary man, he will say, well, that's Majesty just man talking, man. But to the conscious, enlightened being in the earth, who has been studied, prophetically studied, in ancient prophetical language and scrolls, and is studied historically of events in the earth, and is enlightened, would see that the personage of his imperial majesty, Emperor Eel Selassie I, he is divine and truly is a mighty, mighty, mighty angel in the earth. What was remarkable to Ayman same way was to see that his majesty came and visited President John F. Kennedy when Kennedy was president and was a guest of Kennedy, President Kennedy, to the White House, or at the White House. Majesty, again, the first emperor, the first African to be set up as a guest in the White House. Wherever His Majesty went, in New York City, Jamaica, the I name it, the motorcade, the reception, it is the grandest and the biggest recorded in all of those places. Bigger than when the president went out in New York City, in Washington DC, in Jamaica, bigger than when the, gov the, the Bustamante, all of the, the government officials never had such reception like His Majesty. His Majesty is the most decorated with medals, when they come to emperors and field marshal generals, His Majesty is the most decorated. So Rastafari don't come to try to tell the world, oh say you must, I try to influence you that you must heal His Majesty. Rastafari come to show the whole world that His Majesty stand with or without you acknowledging who his majesty is so the best only thing you could do that is best is to acknowledge the truth and embrace the truth that's how i man see it because when i look at revelation he said the same beast that wage war with the woman in revelation 12 he speak about the same beast again later down in revelation allow me again i say i would ask the item to sip it but certain times they have to read too because they want to know where you're reading, reading, or where you're talking from. <laughs> but he said same way. In Revelation 17, those of you that follow it, I start from verse 9. Here is the mind which had wisdom. The seven heads and are seven mountains on which the woman seated. There are seven kings and five fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and of the seven, and goeth into perdition. The ten hands which thou saw are ten kings, which have received ki no kingdom. So these ten kings have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast these have one mind all of them shall give their power and strength unto the beast they shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is the lord of lords and the king of kings and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful so Again, this is prophecy. The beast 
the wage war and he speak about ten hands well this is Europe all of these European nations that give their power on to the Queen yes Queen Elizabeth in Rome I mean in London Buckingham right yes and he speak of that one more nation empire that shall rise up that shall be different from the others they too serve the serve Queen Elizabeth with loyalty that is the United States of America they too is the next beast the newest beast rise up in the earth and they have no power to rule because yeah the president of the United States he take orders honestly so all of them give the power to the beast and all of them have one consent to wage war upon the lamb so when I look at it now because we said the lamb and then they show you but they shall not overcome him because the lamb is the king of kings and the lords of lords the conquering lion of Judah to me that let I and I come in overstanding well 2000 years prior his majesty rise up as we know in Ethiopia the spirit of truth and right the spirit of truth and right tried in the art and carry the name Yahushua and as he him as Emmanuel meaning interpreted God is with us I and I see yes that is the spirit of his majesty as well the spirit of truth and righteousness that has always been in the earth and when he come in the earth he didn't come 2000 years ago boasting himself telling you oh Amidia I mighty and he's the one no he come and tell you repent from the I sinful ways man yes I know that there's a greater there's a greater the almighty and he come to show the eye the way he said me and the father we are one if I, it wasn't so I wouldn't tell you so he leave specific instructions to his brethren and tell them I shall go to prepare a place and the father who is one with him we shall send the comforter who is the spirit of truth and to you the people them and the comforter when he come he shall keep you in remembrance of the teachings of Yahushua keep you in remembrance of the teachings of Christ and shall bring you into all truth and into the light now I see the comfort and the spirit of truth as being one and synonymous with Yahushua Emmanuel which is the same one the comforter his majesty the lamb the lion same one people try to confuse and distort the truth but there's one and he leave a greater teachings with us too that as I am one with the father so are you one with I and I and the father letting I and I know the almighty dwell in man <laughs> So where are we to look for the Almighty? Tell I. Can't look outside a man. We have to look in man. Man is where it's going to come. The answers to the problems of the world. Man has the answers. And His Majesty said to that, He said, yeah. The reason why Africans are in the scenario that we're in. Because we are looking through the spectacles of Europe and all the answers and solutions to the problems that African faces the answer lies within Africa and Africans now let me again show in the eye the Almighty is in us he who loveth righteousness and practice to do good because righteousness 
It is a, a verb, it's a liberty, it's an action, it's a doing. It's not a noun, it's a verb, righteousness. We're on a journey to righteousness, every individual in the earth, to stamp out and to burn out those things that are found within I and I lives that are not right. That is holding us up and delaying us from embracing and being consumed by righteousness. That is the glory, you know, because the teachings of Yahushua and the teachings of His Majesty, they are the same. The same iron pole, the same spirit. It is for us, mankind, to rise up our consciousness and to tread in our highest estate of angelic being rather than the lower being of man. Rise up your chakras, the pineal gland. What they said, the third eye, the first eye. Because when my eyes were closed in the womb, I was still seeing the light of the most eye. Have to be the first. Again, I and I see, if we don't get the teachings of His Majesty, we've been getting the teachings of the misleaders then. And for too long, we see where the teachings of Rome and the teachings of all the governments of the world who follow Rome and follow the European powers that be, they have no true independence. I and I believe, just like His Majesty said, a United States of Africa. His Majesty has led by example. And it is our duty as races to try to lead by example as well. To show those kind-hearted people of our humanity in the earth who is crying desperately for righteousness and for the, the love of the Almighty. Our duty to help fill up the cup that they may sip freely of it. The mercy loving and kindness that it is truth and right because Africa even though many countries tendency in Africa they are still under the yoke of colonialism all their resources all their wealth is still being controlled by Europe no country could be independent and free and don't control their own resources and wealth. None. His Majesty said, the redemption and the liberation of Africa and Africans, it will be meaningless until all Africans are free. So for a man to stand up over here and say, yeah, we free and we happy and we give thanks and praises and so on. Our brothers in St. Thomas are free. Will not be iry, my brother. Just like I said, our brothers and sisters that lost the life in the Atlantic coming across as chattel in sardine cans and then slave ship. Those brothers' lives matter. It matter. The youth man who just lost his life in Kennedy. Yesterday, last night, that life matter. So when I see people them dealing and taking lives like it don't matter. This is the teachings of Rome. It was Rome who came in and our forefathers to kill them, rape them. So today, all we are doing is perpetuating the false teachings, man. Dash down Rome teachings and let's, let us embrace our, our divine heritage. Because, like I said, the teachings of His Majesty is the teachings of truth and right that has been coming across from the beginning of time. 
when a Nigerian stand up in South Africa and they were losing their lives daily hundreds and hundreds of youths that should be in school losing their lives because of the apartheid system that did bother us and that did bother his majesty that's why the IC his majesty wrote a speech about war that Bob Marley didn't make a song about it that he speak about the color of a man's skin and the color of a man's eyes if these things have, is have no more significance it's going to always be war he said of the regime in South Africa and Angola these things more and Mozambique these things must change because it's going to always be war so he let her and I know Africa and and is past and Africans have to stand up for their right agitate in one vice in one unity rally behind the kitchens of the king of kings because his majesty it was his majesty that rallied the other african leaders in the prospective countries the jomo kenyatas you see the kwami Ture. rallying these brothers here and it is his majesty that formulated the organizations of African unity so that we can come together have an arena a place where we can discuss the affairs of Africa and African people and then make a step to bring them into fruition I saw when his majesty rallied the African leaders in, the, in their prospective countries and built Africa Hall for the house to be the organization of African unity in Addis and rally them out of his expense his own pocket money to bring them into Ethiopia and host them his majesty they set the charter for independence that liberation could come about shortly after that we saw the other countries them start to gain the independence so we're still on the course for independence this day as an African United States of Africa. We must control our resources. We must come as a united voice. Have our own currency. The teachings of His Majesty are everywhere in the earth. You could just look into the heavens and the cosmos. Because his Majesty July 23rd, that brings in what? The zodiac sign of the Leo, the lion. <laughs> so on all levels we could speak of the glory. But the message is, my brothers and sisters, the life that we live in, our life is a divine life. And we were birthed into Iration for a specific purpose. I and I feel truly that this generation shall see greater things happen in the earth because greater things have done manifest before our eyes already. Repatriation is a must. Reparation is a must. We shall see these things, you know, because the powers them that say they are, they are coming to naught quickly. Europe is turning against themselves. All other European countries are fighting for independence from, from Queen Elizabeth. His Majesty said, yes, I have prepared the day of judgment to judge the wicked. So Rome and Europe and America, they shall devour each other. But Ethiopians, let us prepare and make our heart and our hands pure and clean that we may rally around the red, gold and green because Babylon they're preparing for war daily. So without faith, I mean with faith, I and I know we shall overcome all things. Them who move without faith, they shall see all of their works come to naught in the earth. And their memorials will be blotted out of the earth. So His Majesty said in the Jubilee Palace, smiling 
to the whole diaspora, he said, with faith, courage, and a just cause, David will still beat Goliath. And I, man, the Rasta man, stand and them same words. With faith, courage, and just cause, humanity will be restored and righteousness shall cover the earth like waters cover the sea. Black, white, Indian, Chinese, all nationalities shall come as one nation on the face of the earth. And the all shall bow and rally to one king of kings. For Israel king is Israel God. He said yes. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. No the law give her from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto Shiloh shall be the gathering of all the nations then. You see the Rasta man? Our life is not for joking. A Rasta man went out in the earth carrying the words, singing songs with culture. And a new nation has been formed before our eyes. A new faith has manifested in the earth. For his majesty said, I have formed them for myself. Created them. So the Rasta man, wherever you are, know that your life has meaning and you have a duty. Your word. Your song, it carry power. We know we are treading on the road to perfection. And we don't claim that we are perfect. But we claim that we receive the fire of correction. Welcomingly receiving it. Wanting it. Because we know we will attain perfection in the earth. Through the grace of his majesty. For that is the will of the father for us. And know that Africa and Africans will be united and the whole world will stand as one. So we don't have fear of the European powers and what they have in store. Because it shall come to naught. Whose words are greater? That of the Almighty or that of Rome? I listen to the first. Yes, sir. Yes, For sir. prince and princesses must come out of Babylon. Ethiopian shall stretch forth their hands unto Emperor Ailis Lassie the first of Ethiopia. Yes, the Irish tried with thee and I to dwell in the paths of righteousness. For thy name's sake, lead I and I. Help I and I to forgive, that I and I may be forgiven. Teach I and I love and loyalty, as it is in Mount Zion. Endow I and I with wise mind, knowledge, and understanding to do thy will. For thy blessings to I and I, that the hungry be fed, the naked clothed, the sick nourished, the aged protected, and the infants cared for. Deliver I and I from the hands of I and I enemies, that we may prove fruitful even in this perilous time. When I and I enemies are past and decayed, in the depths of the seas, in the depths of the earth, even in the belly of the beast. Grant unto all of I and I and I, a place within the ever living kingdom through the powers of the king of kings the lord of lords the conquering lion of judah the elect of the almighty as the light of this world and i vine majesty emperor hail selassie the first the first ancient king of creation the alpha the omega the beginning without end the first and forever the protectorate of i and i life i and i faith and the ruler of this universe. So we hail on to the most high. Hail ye, Selassie I the first. O great and thunderable I. Hail ye, Selassie I the first. Holy I omnipotent, the I mighty I. Hail Selassie I the first. Sila. Tafari, thank you for blessing us, man. Yeah, nothing, but, nothing but wisdom and knowledge and power and peace and love, positivity, soul, and kindness and love and more love and love you know yeah it's my honor give thanks to you brother david yeah you know wouldn't yeah. be possible without the eye <laughs> you know so uh this uh this whole thing is going to be up and just it's just going to be more love being pushed out you know, they're going to hear you again tomorrow morning all over the place you know and one more message man because what's happening in our streets here in saint cry and saint thomas it is devastating man to see children 18 years old, 19 years old lose their lives. And they haven't even lived life yet. Yes. 
Yes. It hurts me, man. This could be the next great prophet. This could be the next great leader amongst I and I. The great next physician. The next one that come with the words. Yeah, I see. We must embrace life. Let us not be the children of darkness, man. We are the children of light. The children of light. Light is love. Love is life. Life is righteousness. Anything else? Let it go on the wayside. So to my brothers, let us love each other. Put down the guns. We don't make guns. Open up your heart with love. Let us resolve our conflicts in a better way, man. With love, with reasoning. With reasoning. At least we could reason. And if we can come eye to eye, then let us just hold our respect. And allow the eye go the eye way, and I go my way. Maybe tomorrow, I and I could shake hands and embrace in love and unity. But let not I and I destroy each other's life. For then there will be no tomorrow. Rastafari is love to the whole world. Yeah, man. One perfect love. One perfect love, man. I is his eye. And we leave it at that. And we like to say on the show, man, one perfect love is our prayers and his blessings. When you put it all together, man, you get one perfect love, man. Tafari, thank you for coming through again, man, and blessing us. We're going to have you back for sure. And... Um, and uh, we'll leave it at that. I just want to say that this is the It's Your Perspective Talk Show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Our website is streaming live from the vi.com. Our telephone number is 340-201-9005. Uh, we'll be back uh, next, week, next week, Tuesday. Have a good weekend. We're out. Peace. It is good to give thanks and praise unto the Most High Cha. For his truth is everlasting, and his mercies endure for eyes. Ja.
swearing from Bible, the verdict, the system is a curse. No matter the rumors, no brainwash where you are burned. 